All right, class, this lecture should serve as a review uh, for you all regarding the anatomy of the cardiovascular system. Uh, and just to, to recap, uh, one of the primary roles of the cardiovascular system is to transport nutrients and remove waste and byproducts while at the same time assisting in maintaining a proper environment for the body's functions, whether it be homeostasis at rest or maybe a steady state while we're doing some sort of aerobic exercise. Um, but it's key to remember uh, and dig back into your previous lectures and other courses that the cardiovascular system also helps regulate some of your body's acid-based systems. It helps regulate fluids, temperature, um, and another other physiological uh, functions. But specifically uh, in this small 10-minute lecture, we're going to focus on the anatomy and physiology of the heart. Now, uh, what we want to remember is with the heart, that it is divided into four chambers, right? There's four chambers. You have your right atrium, your right ventricle, your left atrium, your left ventricle, okay? Um, and essentially those are two chambers divided into sub four, into four sections, right? Like I said, there's a left atrium and then there's a right uh, ventricle, right atrium, left ventricle, okay? And so we're just gonna dissect this heart here in half. So this is probably what you see traditionally in your textbook. So let me zoom in here a little bit. So like I said, here's your right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. And a good easy way to remember that is uh, the atriums are at the top uh, or in the attic of the heart. Both start with the letter A, atrium, attic, uh, at the top of the heart. And then your ventricles are at the bottom. Your heart also has a couple different valves. You have your arterial ventricular valves, which are also known as your tricuspid valve, which you see here on the right side of the heart. So if I change the view, you might be able to see that a little bit better. Sorry. There we are. And the mitral valve. Okay. And so a big uh, thing that you want to remember with valves is that they allow blood to flow through but not back, okay? And a key thing to remember is with, with blood flow, that blood will always flow from areas of low pressure, uh, high pressure to low pressure. Again, they'll flow from high pressure to low pressure. And these valves, um, again, they prevent the back flow of blood. They prevent blood flow from the ventricles back to the atria during ventricular contraction, which is called uh, systole. Remember, we have systole and diastole. Okay, where systole is ventricular contraction, and then diastole is ventricular relaxation. And so you have your other two valves up at the top, if you look here, okay, your aortic valve and your pulmonary valve. These are also collectively, they're known as the semilunar valves. And like I said, they prevent backflow from the aorta and the pulmonary arteries into the ventricles during diastole. So if I ask you, okay, which valves prevent backflow during systole, you should be able to say the tricuspid and the mitral valve. And if I ask you, hey, which two valves prevent backflow during uh, diastole, you should say the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve. So let me zoom out of here for you and go into the PowerPoint slide. Okay, so again, just a little recap heart, it's a muscular organ, it's got two interconnected pumps but four different chambers, right? Right ventricle pumps the blood into the lungs, the left ventricle uh, pumps blood into the rest of the body. Um, that's why we see the red and the blue, blue representing the deoxygenated blood, red representing the oxygenated blood. Okay, so right atrium, blood comes in, into the right ventricle, out to the left and right lungs respectively to receive oxygen comes back in, left atrium into the left ventricle, into the remainder of the body to deliver um, that oxygen-rich blood to where it needs to go. Now, specifically during strength training, okay, it's going to that specific muscle group that will be uh, working during that strength training session. Okay, again, valves, tricuspid valves, mitral valves, uh, those are known as your bicuspid valves and the aortic valve and pulmonary valves. Um, and again, your valves, they will open and close depending on the pressure gradient. So from high to low, high to low. So if blood is coming here into the right atrium, okay, as, those tri as the tricuspid valve opens, the blood is going to flow from this area of high pressure in the right atrium 
into the area of low pressure. And I'm going to show you an animation here in a moment that is actually going to give you a bit of better representation of what I'm trying to explain. And anytime during this lecture, if you feel it's too fast, too slow, you can always pause, stop, rewind uh, to give you uh, an at pace feel for the lecture. Okay. Your heart is also comprised of a conduction system. Okay. If you look in your textbook specifically, uh, I believe it's page 14, 15, uh, figure 1.12, I believe, uh, gives you uh, this diagram here in your textbook. But the conduction system, that controls the mechanical contraction of the heart. And there is a series in which the electrical impulse is sent. So there's a sequential order. So you have what is known as the SA node. Okay, this is the pacemaker of the heart. So this is exactly where that electrical impulse begins. That's where it's typically initiated and the electrical impulse will, will travel down to the AV node. Once it's down to the AV node, it actually will break off into uh, the AV bundles. And once that, AV, once that signal reaches the AV bundles, okay, and that's going to be divided into your, your left and your um, right bundle branch, respectively. And that breaks off into what are called Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers. And these conduct impulses to all the parts of the ventricle. So you can see all this muscular tissue here. And that's where the impulse comes as it starts from the SA node to the AV node, down to the left and right bundle branches, into the Purkinje fibers. And so this is constantly going with every single contraction of the heart, as you can see in this following display. So if you examine the right side of this slide, you'll see the conduction system itself at work. Okay, you'll see the, the SA node at the very top, that impulse going down into the AV nodes to the right and left branches into the Purkinje fibers. And so you'll notice as that impulse gets down into the Purkinje fibers, that's when the blood is being ejected from the ventricles respectively, whether it be to the lungs or to the rest of the body um, to get oxygenated or to send the oxygenated blood to the working muscle tissues. And I put another picture up on the diagram on the left of the actual heart itself, um, trying to uh, show you what is going on with the valve. So you have your um, two valves, your tricuspid and your mitral valve. So you, what I'm hoping you can try to visualize with this uh, graph here or this diagram is the blood flowing in. So notice how the tricuspid valve opens at the same time in which that signal is sent from the SA S to the AV node. And you can notice how the blood fills, 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 and is ejected. High pressure to low pressure, high, high, and then ejected. Fills, 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 ejected with every single impulse. And that is how our conduction system works. Now, obviously, during exercise, your heart is going to uh, work harder. It is going to beat faster. It is going to... Uh, pump faster uh, because it is a muscle. Uh, does anyone know? Do you know? Take a moment here and do you remember the name specifically for the heart muscle? Myocardium. Myocardium. And it's actually influenced uh, by your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Again, take a moment and see if you can remember the difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. One of these speeds up and one of these slows down. So do you recall, uh, does, is it the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system that speeds up heart rate? Well, stimulation of the sympathetic nerves actually accelerates depolarization of the SA node. So that is what causes the heart to beat faster. So if you said sympathetic nervous system, you're correct. The sympathetic nervous system accelerates depolarization in the SA node, which triggers the heart to beat faster. So on the opposite side of that, when the parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated, everything is going to slow down. 
the discharge of the SA node is going to slow down. Okay, so again, to recap, sympathetic nerves accelerates this, uh, depolarization of the SA node. How? Well, it releases epinephrine, aka adrenaline, and norepinephrine, whereas the parasympathetic nervous system slows everything down via the release of acetylcholine. Again, this should all be recapped, refreshed from you from your previous courses, so we're not going to spend too much time. This is just more uh, of a refresher, get you back into it, um, because we're diving straight into uh, deeper lectures with strength training. Okay, And then finally, your blood vessels. Okay, Your bl blood vessels operate in a closed circuit. You have your arterial system and then your venous system. So your arterial system carries blood away from the heart, arterial away. Both start with A, easy to remember. And then your venous system returns blood towards the heart. Okay, returns blood towards the heart. And again, recap, blood, right? You have your hemoglobin that transports oxygen and serves as an acid-base buffer. You have four hemoglobin on every red blood cell, four hemoglobin on every red blood cell, and that has the potential for each um, blood cell to carry four oxygen molecules, okay? And then also red blood cells help remove carbon dioxide. Remember, because that's one of the functions of the cardiovascular system is carbon dioxide removal. Okay, so one big thing I want y'all to remember with the cardiovascular system is that it transports nutrients, removes waste, while helping to maintain the environment of the body's functions. Like I said, homeostasis at rest, maybe a steady state during aerobic exercise, uh, and that your blood helps transport oxygen from the lungs to the tissues via cellular metabolism. When we get into energy systems, we'll talk about that a bit more. Um, your heart also helps transport CO2 from the tissues to the lungs where it's removed by the body.